Hi, I'm Dennis Thompson. I'm uh, retired. I'm the Alfred North Whitehead Professor of Political Philosophy Emeritus at Harvard, where I started the Harvard's first uh, interfaculty in, uh, program. It was originally called the Program in Ethics in the Professions and is now the Edmund J. Safra Center for ethics, uh, and it's doing quite well in my absence. Uh, and it became a model for a, a number of other centers across the uh, uh, country uh, include where people came as fellows and then they went back and started their own center. I was uh, invited to give the keynote uh, address at uh, an inter a conference or a workshop, really, what it was that David Smith organized in Indiana in 1988. Uh, and uh, we didn't, we were surprised in a way how much interest there was, and in, in, not in my keynote so much uh, uh, by any means, but the bringing together people who were teaching in different ethics in different professions uh, found that they had common problems and they were very excited to get together because except for bioethics and a few other areas, uh, the teaching of ethic, ethics of the professions was, was an isolated activity. People felt sort of no, they didn't have many colleagues and they didn't have people to talk to ab about the problems that they were facing in, the, in, in teaching. Our general aim was, as I've already suggested, to try to develop a particular kind of ethics, the uh, practical rather than theoretical and rigorous rather than ad hoc. So, uh, that was the general aim, uh, but we, the, the means that we expected to uh, carry out this aim were initially targeted on ethics centers and major uh, universities. The, um, we didn't initially have Many practitioners, as you can see from the board, they're, they're all academics or people involved in quasi-academic institutes. And um, that was uh, deliberate, although we didn't think it would should remain that way. Um, and in fact, it changed over the years. The um, we didn't initially target students either. Uh, so it was the teachers and researchers in universities who were the um, primary audience and the primary um, source of our membership. And that changed uh, for the better, I think, uh, over the years. For one thing, more practitioners joined. So we have ethics corporate uh, compliance board members or government ethics officers and people like that uh, joined and developed programs. We had programs for not only uh, for, the, for teachers, but also for students. It became a very important activity. And this is something we hoped at the beginning, but never imagined that it would grow as, as well as it has. Uh, the Ethics Bowl, which involved undergraduates and has become a national, even an international success. Um, we, I can't say that we envisaged that at the beginning. We hoped that students would get involved, but we didn't actually think out how that might happen. Uh, and, but yet it did. Uh, summer workshops, uh, the um, programs on research ethics, uh, a book publication series for Oxford, uh, sponsored by the association. And of course, uh, the annual meeting with its little mini conferences for more specialized 
Um, see, that was one of the things we that I, I thought was particularly successful. We, the annual meeting addressed general issues of common interest to across the teaching and professions. Uh, where and then to satisfy the need for going into greater depth on particular issues, topics like environmental ethics, we'd hold many conferences which would be held um, concurrently with the annual meeting, sort of uh, tacked on to the end usually, and that d those developed a considerable amount of interest. I think, to the credit of the association, um, they've anticipated problems and uh, covered a wide range. I think uh, two problems seen, which were discussed before or treated before, but have become more um, relevant today. Racial injustice, I think, is uh, high on, should be and is high on the agenda of any ethics um, organization. And then the, the polarization in society, particularly American society, makes having ethical conversations across um, ethical differences much harder. And that, that was sort of ethics in the face of disagreement was always something that we um, worried about but I think it's become more important than, um, than in the past. But I wouldn't want to lose sight of in trying to be, you know, one of the um, strengths of the association has been in fact to um, respond to flexibly to go, uh, issues as they come up. And uh, it didn't, we didn't really want to um, uh, have, say in the charter, a set of issues that the association had to take up. And so it's been uh, responsive to the ethical challenges that arise in um, everyday life. It's exceeded our expectations. We had high expectations um, as founders, um, but I don't, I, I think if you ask each of us, we would be um, surprised and pleased about how broad the range of activities and the, the membership has grown uh, over the years. Uh, and I'm particularly pleased to see that the students have become involved in the, in the ethics bowl, particularly, but more generally in the association. And that was something that we hoped at the beginning, uh, but didn't actually make explicit provision for. So that, um, that's one of the uh, elements of the uh, progress in the association that I think I've, I've been most pleased to see uh, that we didn't have initially. Mm -hmm.